Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, we're in beautiful Northwestern Ontario at Fireside Lodge. Our species this week is like a box of chocolates. We have smallmouth bass, we have pike, we have muskie, and we have lake trout. We'll talk about all the flies, the equipment, and the technique. Everything you need to know when you want to come to this part of the country. It's going to be a great show, so stay with us. We'll be right back. This week, the new Fly Fisher crew is visiting Fireside Lodge on Little Vermilion Lake in beautiful northwestern Ontario. This full-service drive-to location has one of the best smallmouth bass fisheries in the country and is just three hours from the Minnesota border. Joining me today is Alan Brandes, owner of Fireside Lodge, and his longtime guest and smallmouth enthusiast, Frank Hazard. Both men have many years' experience on Little Vermilion, so I'm very excited about having them guide me. My first day is spent with Frank Hazard. Little Vermilion is a smallmouth haven with many rock reefs throughout the lake. Look for any structure that goes from shallow to deep. This attracts bait fish, which in turn attracts predator fish such as lake trout, pike, and bass. Fish on. I just let that sink and I twitched it once. Oh yeah, right in the corner over there, there's a bit of a reef or a ledge where it drops off. This feels like a decent a little fish. Better, a little better one? Yeah, I feel, yeah, it's got this uh, seven weight bent over pretty good. Yeah, another big, another good size. Oh, that's a good bass. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good bass. <laughs> Oh yes, good and nice. Yeah. There we go, get in there. Oh, get yeah. in there, you. There oh, go. oh, and just in time. He come on pin just in go. time. Oh, this is a 16 and a half to seven. 17, 17 anyways, yeah? Yeah. Now, here, let me get it this way. Yeah, we're getting better. They're getting bigger as we go along. And away he goes. Oh, I love right. bass fishing. Bass fishing is so much fun. Fish on. All right. Good deal. In deep water, too. In deep you water. Some decent bass back here. Or the occasional wall. I just felt I just felt like it was a weight on the end of the, the line. It wasn't a bite or anything. Just I was, I was stripping back, jigging it up and down, and, and it just felt like there was something there. It wasn't right. It was going through something thick almost. And so I set the hook and here we go. Oh yeah. Another decent bass. This is a nice one. Yes, sir, nice. Get in there. Get in there, there thank we you. Go. Pretty colors on him. Yep. Nice. 14, 15 incher? Yeah, 14, 15 incher. I'll take them all day. That's that's from yeah. right up into my elbow. That's a decent the, bass in anybody's books. Look at the bars on him. Yeah, very well marked, very Jesus. well marked. Oh yeah. Oh, fishing here is tremendous. We have species at Fireside Lodge and on Little Vermilion Lake system of smallmouth bass, muskie, northern pike, whitefish, and lake trout. Even though lake trout season is closed on Little Vermilion Lake system, you get in incidental catches, especially in the spring when the water's cold and ice has just gone out. Fireside Lodge, as far as we know, when we tried to investigate it, it was uh, established somewhere in the area of 1904. We've never been able to get a grip on the exact date of it, 
but we know it was an operating lodge in the 20s, 30s, and 40s as a fishing lodge. After we purchased it, we totally refurbished all of the original log cabins and because they needed it. And in 2000, we started to decide that we needed to do upgrades to the cabins in terms of actually building new ones and replacing the old ones. And so that project went on from the year 2000 to 2004. And as you might see in some of our pictures on our website uh, and a few of our videos on YouTube, all our cabins are very new looking. And our last cabins that we uh, finally built were in 2004. This is our 24th season, so we have many regulars that um, book year after year. So we do suggest that as, as soon as you know when you'd like to come, uh, we ask people to book at that time. However, we do take, we take a year in advance. We could take a last minute as well. Just depends on the availability and every year is different. Due to the pre-spawn conditions encountered with the bass being in deep water, I had to use a full sinking line with three feet of 12 pound monofilament leader and then the fly. Besides getting the fly down deep, the full sinking line kept the fly in the feeding zone much longer. On my second day of fishing, Alan took the morning off from his usually heavy workload as owner of the lodge to spend some time with me. Alan is passionate about fishing and sharing his knowledge. This should be a good morning. Fish on. Deeper water. The technique, Alan told me, he says, Bill, do nothing. All I'm doing is letting it sit and then twitching it back, retrieving it. Wow, good, good fish. Very nice fish. This, oh, this is exciting. Wonderful. And very nice. Very, very nice. Good fish. Hold them up for the camera, Helen. <laughs> Way to go, Bill. Great, a do nothing bass. Yeah, That's do terrific. It, Way to go. It all was, I let it sink to the bottom and I twitch, twitch, and then let it sink and do nothing again. And the next time I twitched it, he was on. So they're picking it up right off the bottom, aren't they? Just right after it went off. Uh, off the ledge, yeah. Off the I'm, ledge. I'm taking it on the ledge and I'm letting it drop and letting it drop to the bottom. They're, they're hugging tight to these ledges. Fabulous. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go. Perfect if you catch a fish now. Yeah. The perfect timing. Oh! How'd I call that? That's a fish. And it feels a like a good fish, too. That's that, that's that 19 and a half incher. Wow, we. Wait, he's waiting for the photo op. I don't know if this is a bass. <laughs> it's pulling I, pretty good. Uh, I think uh, it might be a bass. I don't know. I think know. it is. I think it's a big bass. I think that's what we got here. Well, we're gonna now, go I love this, this do nothing. <laughs> this do nothing. Uh, this do technique. nothing approach, isn't it fabulous? Just twitch, twitch, let it sit. Yeah, twitch, exactly. twitch, and one twitch, you got a fish on. That is, Boy, that's, that is amazing, isn't it, yeah. when it starts to work? This is amazing, yeah. Uh, come on, come on. Yes, sir. This do nothing technique. Now, this is an average fish, right? That is correct. It's yes. an average it's fish. An average that's fishing. average, uh, which is terrific. But it's a, it's a do nothing. I just let it sink to the bottom. If I see it's on a rock, I pull it off the edge of a rock, let it sit, and then twitch, twitch. Let's let her go. It's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Good. There I like go. that. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the weather's warming up and the fishing's getting better. At this time of year, I had to use a heavier rod. Reason being, I had to use a full sinking line to get my fly down to where the bass were. They were in between 10 to 15 feet of water. 
Uh, so I, my choice was a number eight weight, nine foot rod with a good stout reel and very important, a good drag system. Uh, there are pike and musky in the same area and you could tie into one of them, thus you need the good drag system. I used a full sinking line, but later in the year when the bass move up on the, on the weeds, you can get away with a six weight rod. But for this, this trip here, I used a number eight weight, nine foot rod. Our meal plan is very flexible. We have meal hours that you don't have to be in the dining room at one exact time. We have three choices every evening, which includes a red meat, a white meat, and a non-meat choice. And vegetarians are very welcome at Fireside Lodge. And even if you don't show up for dinner, if you're, the fish are biting when you're, it's dinner time, we'll pack up your meal, put it in your cabin, and you could eat it when you get back. So you don't miss any meals if you're fishing or you can do your schedule how you want to do it. You could do your trip how you want to do it and your meal plan does not get affected because of that. Now the bass at this time of year are pre-spawn, which means they're coming from deep water into shallow water. We're finding them on rock ledges and rock piles. Now by far the best pattern that I had this week was Scotty's McFly. This pattern has taken 90% of my smallmouth bass over the last three years. Well, I wore out my last Scotty's McFly, so I had to choose something different. So I chose white zonkers. They seem to work too. Another pattern to have are clouser minnows. You should have a variety of colors of clousers. They work about everywhere. And also, Never go anywhere for bass without the black woolly bugger. The woolly bugger by far has taken more fish than any other pattern ever created for fly fishing. Never be without your woolly buggers. This one has a cone head on it just to get it down deeper. Like I said, the fish were deep in 10, sometimes 15 feet of water. And now for the pike. This lake is full of perch and that's the main feed for the pike. I've been using this, this perch pattern here that is made of synthetics. It, it's worked really well. It looks just like a perch when it's in the water. Uh, I ha actually had a, a large muskie follow this right up and unlucky for me, he didn't take it, but we had him right beside the boat. Other uh, patterns that you want when fishing for pike are anything with red or white in it. Red and white works really well for pike. That's a standard, uh, uh, the, a standard uh, lure that they use is a daredevil which is red and white, and it works probably the best of all pike lures. So red and white on your flies works really well. And for later in the season, when you come here, the fish will be on the, on the lily pads and in, in the weeds. You want a good supply of poppers. Bring a, a, a variety of colors, red, yellow, green, black, uh, any color you can think of, because you never know which one is gonna work. Fish. fish, it's a fish. Fish, good one too. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good one too, yeah. Just a dead weight, that's all it was. Oh man, I think he's just There's realized. another one swimming away. Yeah. Another one swam away. We got him right in that channel there. This is another good size fish. Oh yeah. Wow, we. They fight, huh? They fight. They, they, this is an eight weight, believe it or not. I usually fish with a six weight, but I needed a full sinking line today. So I had to go with my eight weight. They even fight on that. They even fight on that. This, this is meant for steelhead, not for bass. <laughs> Beautiful. Good, man. That's a, oof. Well, that's a good one. Chunky, yeah, very chunky. You want to measure one of these or? No, no, uh, that's. Okay. That's a solid 17. Yeah. Solid 17. Yeah. 
It was lunchtime and Alan had to return back to his duties at the lodge. Frank Hazard graciously volunteered to take me around to his favorite spots. I took this time to have a chat with him. Now Frank, you're a longtime guest and I was just wondering how many years you've been here and why do you keep coming back? This is my 23rd year here and uh, I've been to five other lodges in Canada and what made the difference for me was Alan Audrey. They, they run such a good program here. The, uh, the attention to detail is so important to them and it's their passion and I've had good fishing everywhere I've been and this is no, uh, no exception to the rule. And, but the difference for me has always been the ownership they make the, made the trip uh, for me the very first time, and ever since then I've always been back. And this is my again 23 years. I spent almost a year of my life on this lake fishing here that many days, and uh, I'll always come back as long as I'm able. Now, Frank, the fishing here is good, but how good is it? I, me personally, I expect anywhere from 50 to 75 fish per day uh, here in the springtime. Summertime is a different little situation. The, the bass move on the weeds, but again, you, you catch big bass in the summertime. But uh, my experience also in the summertime is that you catch some larger bass and more of them. Uh, I'm talking about the 18 inch plus bass, uh, but those fish are available in the springtime also. But the fishing is, in my opinion, for smallmouth is a world-class fishery. On. Fish on. Feel good or small? Yes, well, he's he's fighting hard, but he, he's really fighting fast. He's fast and furious on this one. <laughs> and I got another two, three, four fish underneath him. <laughs> we found a hot bed of fish. That's a little bit thicker fish. Yeah. And not, there you go. Yes, yes sir. There yeah. we go. Again, barbless. <laughs> I'll catch these all day. Hitting that time. A lot of fish. I think there's a lot of fish off the end of that. Yep. This we'll is good back fish. us off again. Oh boy. Could be some good ones up here. I think so. Right off the end there. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh boy. That looks probably nice. One. This is a nice, nice fish. And the nice thing about it was, I had one hit, he got off, and I just kept working the fly after that, and another one hit it. Oh my. It is a bass, right? Yes, sir, it's okay. a bass. All right. Look what it's doing to my, to my rod. This is quite a heavy rod. Because I have to go to a, a sinking line, I've gone to there a heavier rod. Nice fish. This is a really nice fish. Oh my. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh yes, I'm excited about this fish, folks. I'm really excited about it. There we go. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. There we go. How do you like that, folks? Oh, yeah. Sinking lines, do nothing technique. It's exactly the way you, you should be working it at this time of year. They're not active. They're very on a neutral feeding habit right now. You want to get a measurement, sir? Sure. Got him. Oh, is that right? 19 inches. <laughs> right. 19 inch fish. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Wow. Wasn't that exciting? 19 inch smallmouth bass on a fly. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and come and visit Alan and Audrey here at Fireside Lodge for your next outing. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, Tight Lines, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time, so if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded.